Hi, I'm John Storms, and I'm uh, rigging up a switch to run with the uh, Falcon player. So here I have a Raspberry Pi 2B, and the uh, first thing I need to do is I need to look at these GPIO pins. There are 40 pins on the Pi 2, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to control a circuit, and this circuit will be used as a trigger. So first thing is I want to hook something up to pin number one, which is 3.3 volts positive. Okay. And I went and just looked up the pin out on uh, the internet. Okay, so I'm using the red wire for voltage for positive. Then down here, pin 39 is ground. So I'm going to hook a black wire up to ground. And then I want to use uh, GPIO 17, which is pin 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I did this right, there should be four pins in between. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are. Okay. So this is wired up here. Now I need to wire up the switch. And uh, the schematic for the switch is really easy to find. It's actually on the, uh, the Falcon Pi player. Okay, so I start off. Alright, so now I'm going to wire up the switch. Wiring up the switches, I'm just going to use a uh, standard breadboard, like you'd get at Radio Shack. Um, and this has power rails on the side, so all of these lines, this whole line of dots are connected, this whole line of holes are connected, one for positive, one for negative, and there's one on the other side. And these are power rails. Then in the middle, they're connected horizontally, except they're broken in the trench. So these five holes are connected, and these five holes are connected. Okay, so they form a bus. Okay, so I'm going to start off by placing my switch. Uh, just straddle the trench. Okay. okay. So now I'm hooking up the switch to ground, just like in the uh, schematic. Okay, so I jump it over, so I'll be this with this rail on this side will be ground. Now going off the top row, this is a 1000 ohm resistor. And then I'm just going to hook it up to a row further down here. Put it on row 30. Okay, so now I have a 10,000 K ohm resistor and it's going to go from this same line here. I'm going to connect it over to here where I'm going to have 3.3 volts coming in from the Raspberry Pi like that. Now I actually hook up the connections from the Pi. So this red wire, if you remember, this is my V positive. So it's going to go in right here. And then this jumper the black one is for my negative, or my ground, and that goes in right there. And then this brown one is connected to pin 11, which is GPI, GPIO 17. And I'm going to stick it right here on this same line as the 10,000K resistor and the 1K resistor. And that's it. So now we just power it up and see if it works. Okay, now we're going to configure the FPP to trigger a sequence. So uh, there's kind of a bunch of steps here, so I just wanted to outline it before we, we jumped into it so that you understand the big picture of what's going on. What we want to do is we want the lights to play when we push a button, right? That's what we mean by a trigger. So first thing we need is a sequence. The sequence needs to be in a .fseq format, which is a binary format that X lights will generate. You can do it in Lightorama, which is what I've done. I created an animation sequence and then opened it up in X lights or converted it in X lights. Then you take that sequence and you put it in a playlist. Okay, so when you play the playlist, it plays that sequence and maybe other sequences too. Then you create a little script. This is just a simple shell script, and this is trivially easy, so nothing to be scared of. There isn't really any programming, but this script runs the playlist, and then you have an event that runs the script, and then you associate the event with the GPIO pin. 
So when the FPP or the, the Raspberry Pi detects a voltage drop on that GPIO pin, it triggers this event. That event is hooked up with the script, the script runs, it plays this playlist, this playlist has the sequence in it, and the sequence goes and it controls your lights. <coughs> okay, so let's set it up. Uh, here is my Falcon player. So first thing I want to do, that first step was sequence. So I already have one ready to go. So I'm going to go to Content Setup, File Manager, and select Files. So let me go to my C drive. That's where I keep my sequences. And whoop, that is the Lightarama version. That won't run. I stuck it someplace else. Right here it is. See? Simple 16 channel dot FSCQ. So I say open. And you see that? It uploaded that fast. And if I look over here under se under the sequences tab, it's right there. Okay? So the next thing I need is a playlist. So I go to content, setup, and I select playlists. And enter in a new playlist name. I'm going to call it Play Me click add and then here you have some choices play first entry only once play last entry only once sequence type this is sequence only okay and then right here's my sequence I click add and it pops up on the sequence list okay I hit save and boom I'm done with my sequence or done with my playlist. So I have my sequence, I have my playlist, now I need a script. Alright, this is the part that for some reason people think is scary, but it is not scary. So I'm going to open up Notepad. Okay, the first line of every, or the first character of every script is a, is a pound symbol, a hashtag. Okay, actually, and the second symbol is a hashtag followed by a bang. This basically tells Linux, you're going to run a script. Okay, and the, to run a script, it's not really a compiled program, it's an interpreted program. So we need the, to specify what interpreter we're going to use. You can use Perl, you could use Python, you could use all these things, but on the FPP it seems commonly we're using just a regular old shell script. So if you actually went into the file system and you went to the bin directory, you would see a program there called SH. Okay, so it's going to, whatever commands we give it, it's going to run. And this is just a, a shell command. So it's like you're typing this on the command line. So now what we want this script to do is we want this script to run our Play Me playlist. So we say FPP, which is the name of a program that is loaded up. It is our FPP player or our Falcon player. We do minus capital P for playlist. So we're saying, FPP, I want you to play a playlist. Which one? The one I just created, Play Me. OK? Now, when I go to save this, OK, I am going to, first of all, make sure you save it in a place you can find it again. I'm just going to put it at the root of D. Do not save it as a text document. Save it as all files. That will let you name it whatever you want. And we are going to name it um, play, play, play me, <laughs> dot sh, okay? That dot sh is important. We has to have that extension. And I save that. So that's saved as a text file. So now I come over to content and setup. I go to file manager, upload. And now I go to the place where I save that file, and here it is, play, play me. I say open. It's there. If I go to the scripts tab, I can click on it. I can edit it. You see? That's what I stuck in there. Okay. So I come back here. I have my sequence. I have my playlist. I have my script. Now I need an event. So I go to status and control. I go to events. Okay, and I go down here and I click Add Event, Event Name, Play, Play Me Play. Okay, just
just something you can remember it by. This event ID, major and minor, is used to associate it with sequencing channels. You can actually kick off a trigger via your sequence. So you could actually say, if this happens in my sequencing, do this. Um, and usually people will reserve channels to, to do that. But for a hardware input trigger, you just leave that at 1, 1. It, it essentially ignores it. The effect sequence, none. Effect event script is my play me script. Save event. See, now it's an event. Okay, let's see. So I've created my sequence, I have my playlist, I have my script, I have my event. Now I need to associate it to a GPIO input. So I go to input output setup. I go to GPIO inputs. I select the GPIO that I want to play with. In this case I have set up a switch on GPIO 17. Now rising and falling, I want it to do something. I have it set up so that when I drop voltage on uh, GPIO 17, I want it to kick off my script. So I clicked falling, and you see right here is the event I set up. Okay, it says it saved it. Now I say I want to enable it. Restart FPPD. And that's it should work. I've created, uh, so I've just associated the GPI input falling to my event. My event is connected to my script. My script is connected to my playlist. My playlist is connected to my .fsaq file. Okay, so now everything is hooked up. Over here I have my breadboard with all the uh, components laid out the way they're supposed to be. And then I have the jumpers going back to the to the uh, Raspberry Pi with FPP running on it. And then from here I have a USB connection to the Lightarama RS-485 adapter with booster. And then that's connected of course to the CTPD-16 which is connected up to some lights. So what we do now is we reach in and carefully press the button. And it kicks off the sequence. It's just an animated sequence, just for testing, but it works pretty nice. So now the breadboard is good for for prototyping some stuff. Uh, when I get a, a little better at this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy, which is called the um, the Pi Easy Connect. It sits right on top of the GP, GPIO pins. Um, it has uh, headers for each of the uh, GPIO pins as well as the 5 volts and 3.3 volts and then in the middle here has uh, a little breadboard so I can solder in some uh, more permanent connections and then hook it up to some nicer switches. So this is like, this basically replaces this lower equivalent, this is the, um, the, the, uh, the input pop. And this is uh, an easy connect. It's just that we gotta wire it up ourselves. So this is a step onto a, a more permanent, pretty solution. Okay. So that's it. Appreciate all the online help from folks uh, on uh, critiquing my uh, my circuit.